one thing I noticed, I mean, uh, two years ago we were both um, at Carson at the CrossFit Games. You were competing. I was, well, technically coaching, but I was mostly looking at the girls backstage. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> one thing I noticed is that all these dudes were pretty jacked, and even the girls were like super jacked also. Uh, I talked to uh, one of the Australian guys, and he said that they always include some form of bodybuilding work at the end of their workouts. I know that you, as a CrossFit coach, you also put some emphasis on, on bodybuilding work. Yeah. Uh, first of all, what's your reasoning for including bodybuilding work in CrossFit training? Well, actually, the first thing would be uh, structural, structural balance. So uh, when we finish the uh, open season or when it comes the regionals and at least comes out from this, well, uh, it's a bit if you think about a bone and you have not so much meat around it a bit. Um, technically, thinking about uh, some uh, smart meat, actually, because uh, after regionals, your pump, they're, they're big, they're ready to, uh, to, uh, to, to work with huge amount of weights though. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't go through specific uh, type of pulling. We did a lot of pull-ups, of ring muscle-ups, of butterfly, chest -to bar and everything. But the, the strict movements are not so trained. Mm -hmm. So actually it's to come back to the sources, uh, put some good meat around the bones and uh, working through all those muscles gonna work in those specific exercises. For example, first, uh, first uh, cycle would be uh, focusing on uh, getting back to basics. So on my bodybuilding, I'm gonna have like two or three days of bodybuilding and I'm not gonna finish in with it. I'm gonna start with it. Okay, so do you do like the bodybuilding, then you have the what, for example? Uh, yeah, oh, for example, I can have like my, uh, my, uh, my bodybuilding, uh, my upper body strength would be uh, actually uh, supersets of uh, push and pull. I'm gonna go through more specific, so maybe with some uh, weighted pull-ups, uh, with some uh, military press and I'm going to go with the, some bent overall and uh, one arm uh, kettlebell press or something. And then here comes the water, can comes with, uh, I can go with some air bike just to go my more lower body to focus really more on the upper body part. So I'm going to cut uh, upper body, lower body and uh, not just going for uh, doing a wad for doing a wad. Mm -hmm. I'm really going to have a thinking behind it. So the first, the first answer would be structural balance because I want to get back to the sources and have a, a good balance. And the second reason would be to work the muscles that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with on my specific exercise in CrossFit. So, so uh, we got, getting back to the bodybuilding work, what are you doing in your more strict work? Either strict pull-ups, uh, military press, kettlebell press, rowing. Just exercise that you use mostly to build muscle uh, early in the off-season. Uh, are you using like a slower tempo? Are you using uh, con like squeezing the contraction? Are you using higher reps? How, how do you approach? Yeah. Uh, which methods do you use when doing the bodybuilding work? Well, uh, I tend to go with more supersets because the problem with CrossFit athletes is that they're always like, they, they want to feel their, uh, their, their producing energy and uh, it's hard. And uh, if I go with like, some rest pause, just like, uh, let's say four sets of 10 to 15 or something like that. Did they you don't get bored? They, yeah, exactly. They don't feel they're working out. Yeah. So basically, if I'm not doing imams, I'm doing supersets or three sets. It's, it, it's funny because, I mean, we, talk, we both talked about um, like the neurological profile. Yeah. And from what I noticed is CrossFit athletes, in, in most cases, not all of them, but most cases uh, tend to be a type 1B or a type 2A, which are both driven by a very high rate of work. Uh, they need to have either that high adrenaline release from the short rest intervals or that high dopamine release from the uh, also not taking a lot of rest because they do need Adrenaline is produced from dopamine, so you do need also that face pa fast pace. If they don't get that, they, they lose interest in the workout, and if they lose interest, they, they don't progress well. Exactly. So uh, how much emphasis do you put on the strict variation of the skills? For example, yeah. pull-ups, dips, uh, how important are they to you in yeah. your training? Well, actually, uh, I'm always starting a cycle with that. Uh, because it's the base of all the movements. So I don't gonna go with some keeping pull-ups, butterfly pull-ups, if the athlete doesn't own a strict pull-up. And I'm gonna start uh, using, just what you talked about before, uh, some tempo. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, for the summer, uh, I, I was doing strict pull-ups with tempo. So pulling in uh, uh, like explosive pulling, hold on top one or two seconds, down in three seconds. So on all the tempo in each movement, same as the push-ups or the dips. 
Uh, and in the bodybuilding exercise, mostly I'm going to work, for example, with dumbbell bent over. I'm starting with uh, dumbbell bent over on an incline bench, really to focus on uh, um, engaging the lower, the, 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 the mid traps, lower traps. And uh, I'm going to start with uh, probably a dumbbell uh, old on top, alternating. Yeah. So I'm going to increase the time uh, of my old on my uh, on the upper part of the movement. Uh, alternating, I can go with uh, some uh, dumbbell bent over um, old couple of seconds on top going down so the old part the isometric part is super important on my first cycle during my summertime how, how long is that cycle for uh, actually I did like a three month cycle and they worked through like a first four weeks that was super um, uh, the emphasis was on bodybuilding a lot uh, the second one, the exercise are changing a bit, but they really did like a four weeks with the same exercise with a regular progression you can find on bodybuilding with a number of sets and the reps, just like uh, straight up bodybuilding. On the second uh, cycle of, uh, on the second block of four weeks, I changed a bit the exercise, changing the angle of roll, but, uh, and the, the old, the isometric contraction was a little bit less, but I was still holding like a one or two so seconds. But you're using the isometric hold earlier so you can actually program the use of the muscle. Then as you become better, then you can reduce the hold because you are good at contracting that muscle. Exactly. And what I found in my first cycle, I asked my athletes, what, the, what is the biggest progression you add? And the, I was really focusing on upper body strength because the last regionals and all the regionals are, are coming. You really feel that the upper body strength is super important now. Mm -hmm. So uh, they feel that oh, I was, my pulling is so much better. Uh, when I go doing my pull-ups, I'm so much stronger now. When I pull something from the ground, I'm stronger. And that's a, that's a really good point because people think about pulling from the ground. I got to do deadlift, I got to do Olympic lifting. But they don't think about that component of upper body strength. So just doing bent overall, uh, one arm dumbbell strict press, one arm dumbbell kettlebell push press, that was a game changer for them. Yeah, basically, you can't have any weak muscles if no. you want to perform. And one thing that, that personally I noticed is that most CrossFit athletes lack eccentric and isometric strength. Exactly. And that might be one of the main reasons for the injuries you see in CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, if you f focus on the isometric and eccentric like you, like you do, then that greatly reduce the risk of injuries and also increase performance. Yeah, exactly. And the increasing of performance is, is huge because uh, they come in and they just want to move. Crossfitters want to move, but they mm. don't understand the movement. They don't understand the right muscles are working. So it's really, there's a, a lot of work to do in um, uh, your mu muscle mind, con mind connection, understanding the right muscles, uh, understanding the movement, yeah. the, all the part of the movement. And so there's a lot of learning in those first cycle and this is the foundation of what we're going to do after, because I'm not going to throw them in some sort of uh, super traditional cross with, uh, with pull-ups and heavy squats if they can't do a real nice slow tempo squats or strict pull-up. I think that's one of the big problems we see in like the, the regular boxers, for example. They, because if you take someone who can't do a pull-up and you teach them how to kip, they can probably do a few pull-ups and then they yeah. feel good about themselves, yeah. but they don't have the structure to, to hold themselves it. up. Yeah. That's for sure. And, but you know what? It's, this is two, uh, two, um, two different needs. I'm going to have some people coming in the box. They're going to stay for an hour. Mm -hmm. They're coming in, they go out, they want to do some CrossFit training. Yeah. So you got to answer their, their needs, mm -hmm. but you have to create the, 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 the training structure that I'm going to help them to bring them there. So probably in my session, I'm going to have some strict pull-up work and I'm going to have another type of pulling just to get their pulling action through. So I'm not going to go like keeping pull-ups, okay, and then the workout keeping pull-ups. So they're, they're working actually, they're pulling action, but a little bit more smart. So uh, when the keeping pull-up session is going to come, they're, they're going to be ready for it without knowing it, you know? Mm, very cool. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks.